Well, I'm, I'm st struck that uh, soul, I think, is very heavily dependent on oil. That's to say it is uses very intensively uh, modern oil-based power. And I think that in 10 to 15 years, this presents a real problem. Because we know that uh, the people within the oil industry know that we are reaching peak oil and that oil is like, likely to increase in price very severely. So the challenge for the next 10 to 15 years is how to develop cities which are less dependent on oil. That is the big challenge for every city in the world. It's a big challenge for London, which is a world city in finance. Because you will, we will not be able to afford everyone flying all over the place, moving goods in the way they are. Um, places like Dubai, which are most heavily dependent, will go out of existence because they will not be able to sustain themselves. So I would say the first thing about Seoul is that is its great challenge, is how to develop uh, a more autonomous form of living and economy. I think the second big challenge that it shares with other cities is how once everyone has got their clothing and their, their, their food and their housing is how to have a life that has a meaning. How to have a life where relationships are the most significant thing. So one area that everyone is facing already is when you get old you live in the city how are you going to be supported it's a big big issue over the next 20 years so how do you refashion a city so that it is a wonderful place to grow old in and not just to be young in i think that's the second issue the third big challenge is as we live longer more of our problems in health are not those we can go to hospital and have an operation. They are ones which we live with, chronic disease, like diabetes or, or heart disease or even cancer. Because cancer now, you know, is, is increasingly becoming a chronic disease. So what are the kind of systems that would allow us to live well with these, with these chronic diseases. And what we know from uh, those areas which have done it well is it depends on the strength of the support you get from your family and communities. So those, I think, are three of the big challenges that uh, my sense from talking to people in Seoul is that those are all three going to be big, big challenges in the next, what, 10 or 20 years and that this the planning for them must start now it's going to have to be a different kind of city now the on the positive side I think that Seoul what I'm struck by is how advanced you are in technology everyone seems to have a mobile and we know that many things are going to shift from the computer to the mobile um, uh, I've just been reading a book on banking, which suggests that many of the, the functions of a bank will shift to the mobile. And at the sessions that we've had this week with social innovators, many of the most exciting projects are using mobile technology to, to provide very interesting solutions to the problems that I've been talking about. Uh, Aging, for example. Or... Um, weakness in the labour market, how you can strengthen the position of workers with public insurance and training and so on by using mobiles in the labour market. So I think actually Korea and Seoul as the biggest city in Korea is in an extremely good position to use the new technology within the context of a strong local community to find answers 
not only to your problems, but they're ones which in the West we can then learn from because I don't think we are as advanced as you and our existing institutions are more entrenched and defensive and conservative and I think you are more open and in the last three days that I've been here I have been enormously impressed with some of the innovations in the social economy. Uh, I've, we've talked to a number of the food cooperatives and uh, they have substantial membership. They, I think, in some ways are, are much more advanced in the way they are operating than in Britain. They are all organic. They are dealing with the problem of, of, the, problem of the food industry which is, has been depleting the soil and is in, increasingly a, a health problem, whatever the regulations say. And they are building up a very intense community network for, for, the, for the distribution of food and the support of organic farmers, which I am going to go back and talk to our cooperative movement because I think we have much to learn from them. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, uh, this morning, uh, I've spent the morning with a wonderful community project uh, in, uh, in Seoul, which, which has created, in a short time, has created a hundred jobs uh, around people living their, their lives and bringing up their children in a really magnificent uh, community way. I, it, it makes me want to come and live in Seoul because it's not just about providing kindergartens and schools uh, but and, and food, and they have a food co-op, and a restaurant, <laughs> and a cafe. But it's also, much more important, it's about culture. It's about all sorts of activity groups that have come. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it reminded me of the, the uh, gentleman that uh, I spoke to last week, who has been developing um, clubs, culture clubs, in other parts of Korea. And I thought this was another wonderful innovation for creating this the kind of community-based life and economy on which I think the future is going to depend. So uh, I think uh, I heard Mr. Park's um, program yesterday, and I think a program like this, uh, undertaken by a mayor but with support of people who share this outlook and share this project will, I hope, attract all sorts of people because one of the things that has most struck me is how those big companies who have a long-term perspective, they know that these are the problems and they know that the solution is not going to be with technology alone, but with people being able to form themselves in communities with the help of a public sector. And I think it's companies like those, which I, I'm sure there are many in Korea, who will support this particular project and not be frightened of change. They're never frightened of change in their own sector. So they should not be frightened. They should embrace uh, this, this new social innovation uh, that I think would come uh, if Mr. Park were elected.